History of Philippine Education, presented by Chief Engineer Roland Bilog, Second Officer Alain Buerom, and Second Officer Jomel Cervello. To begin with, the pre-Spanish time before 1521. The goal, integration of the individual into tribes. The aim is survival, conformity, inculturation. The focus is customs and tradition, characteristic, not formal, community-based, no educational system. The methods, tell me or show me or demonstration method. Alibata by Bayin, which is composed of 14 consonants and three vowels. So this is our very early form of writing. Number three is oral immersion or practical demonstration of the skill. The education of pre-Hispanic Filipino was fit for the needs of their times. There was no formal schooling. Education was oral, practical, and hands-on. During the pre-colonial period, education was decentralized. Children were provided with vocational training, but little in the way of traditional academics. Parents trained their children informally. Mothers educated their female children in housekeeping, weaving, basket making, and other agricultural related activities. Fathers trained their male children in hunting, carpentry, agriculture, shipbuilding, whether highland, lowland, or along seashore. Philippine schools were headed by parents or by tribal tutors. Stories, songs, poetry, and dances were passed from generation to generation through oral tradition. In regards to the early teachers or educators, they are known to be called Babaylan or Catalonan. They are believed to possess the wisdom and knowledge on spirituality. They are respected by the society. Beliefs and tradition, the types of educations, are totally based on their beliefs and without any scientific evidence. They employed a unique writing system known as by buy-in. The highlights in this period is skill training. Our curriculum is already a combination of theory and practice. In the maritime school, we have that cadetships that is placed in the third year of the curriculum. Example, after learning in the theory in the classroom, students will aboard in the ships. There they can apply the program of the institution guided by the assigned officer using the checklist handbook when performing the assigned scheduled tasks in different types of machines like generators, engine, boilers, oil purifiers, and other types of machineries. And next, the Philippine history of education during the Spanish period. The Spanish period general characteristic, no grade level, church base, and no educational system. The nature of education, education was formal and under the auspices of the Roman Catholic Church. There should be at least one primary school for boys and girls in its town under the responsibility of the municipal government. Primary institution was free. Their goal is to spread Christianity. It focuses on religion. Education is not prescribed, flexible, and non-centralized. What do they teach? Teaching of the Catholic religion, Christian doctrines, Latin and Spanish language, and imposition of Spanish culture. Method of teaching is catechetical instruction, use of corporal punishment, role memorization. Education degree of 1863, regulation of private schools, 
establish of private of public schools, founding of normal school. University of Santo Tomas, Pontifical University by Pope Leo XIII of November on September 17, 1902, the Catholic University of the Philippines in 1947. The friars controlled the educational system. The missionary took charge in teaching, controlling and maintaining the rules and regulation. Parochial schools were led by Dominicans and Jesuits. Establishment of normal school for male teachers under the supervision of the Jesuits. When the Spanish first arrived in Manila, they were surprised to find a population with a literacy rate higher than that of Madrid. During early Spanish period, most education was conducted by religious orders. Friars, recognizing the value of literate indigenous population, built printing presses to produce material in Baybayin. Missionaries studied the local languages and the Baybayin writing system to better communicate with the local population and teach Christianity. The church and the school cooperated to ensure that Christian village had school for students to attend. Spanish missionaries established schools immediately after reaching the island. The Augustinian opened a school in Cebu in 1565. The Franciscan immediately took the task of improving literacy in 1577, aside formed the teaching of new industrial and agricultural techniques. The Jesuit followed in 1584 as well as Dominicans in 1587, and they started a school in their first mission at Bataan. In 1590, the Universidad de San Ignacio was founded in Manila by the Jesuit and was incorporated into University of Santo Tomas college and pharmacy following the suppression of the Jesus. The first book printed in the Philippines dates back to 1590. It was a Chinese language version of Doctrina Christiana, a Spanish and Tagalog version in both Latin script and the locally used by Bayan script was later printed in 1593. Pinpin, Pin, Prince of the Filipino Printer, in 1610, Tomas Pinpin, a Filipino printer, writer, publisher who is sometimes referred as the patriarch of the Filipino printing, wrote his famous Librong Pag-aaralan ng mga Tagalog ng Wikang Castila, which was meant to help Filipino learn the Spanish language, the prologue read. Let us therefore study, my countrymen, for although the art of learning is somewhat difficult, yet if we are persevering, we shall soon improve our knowledge. Other Tagalog like us did not take a year to learn the Spanish language when using my book. This good result has given me satisfaction and encouraged me to print my work so that all may derive some profit from it. In 1640, the University of the San Felipe de Austria was established in Manila. It was the first republic university in the Philippines. By the end of the 16th century, several religious orders had established charity hospitals all over the archipelago and provided the bulk of the public services. This hospital also became setting for rudimentary scientific research work on pharmacy and medicine. The Jesuit also founded Coleo de San Jose, 1601, and took over the management in which later became Escuela Municipal in 1859. Escuela Municipal was later renamed to Ateneo Municipal de Manila in 1865 and is known today as Ateneo de Manila University. The Dominican founded the Coleo de San Juan de Letran in 1620 in Manila. The Dominican founded the Coleo de San Juan de Letran in 1620 in Manila. In 1863, an educational degree 
mandated on the establishment of the three primary schools in each town, one for the boys and one for the girls, with a precise number of schools depending on the size of the population. There were three grades, Entrada, Ascenso, Termino. The curriculum required the study of Christian doctrines, values, and history, as well as reading and writing in Spanish, mathematics, agriculture, etiquette, singing, word geography, and Spanish history. Girls were also taught sewing. The degree also provided for a normal school run by the Jesuit to educate teachers in Manila. Normal school for women teachers were not established until 1857 in Nueva Caceres. Despite of the degree of 1863, basic education in the Philippines remained inadequate for the rest of the Spanish period. Often there were not enough schools built. Teachers tended to use corporal punishment. After the Spanish colonial period, after the Spanish colonial government was overthrown, the school established during the Spanish era were closed down for a time by Emilio Aguinaldo's government. The Malolos Constitution made elementary education compulsory and provided for free schooling. The University Literaria de Filipinas, which provided courses in law, medicine, surgery, pharmacy, notarianship, was established by Aguinaldo on 19 of October 1898. He also set up the Military Academy of Malolos and degree that all diplomas awarded by USD after 1898 be considered null and void. The curricula of school were not much different from those under Spanish domination. While Tagalog was established as a national language by the constitution of Biak Nabato, reading, writing, and literacy studies in Spanish were still given emphasis. In every institution, prayers will always be practiced. It's already our norms and tradition, be it in a simple way like prayer before and after class. In a Catholic and old school, particularly in USD, religion is stretched out. It is validated in their curriculum by having a subject of theology. Memorization is still part of education. It is a technique of learning. It will always be a part of education, specifically in theoretical subject. Corporal punishment is also present in a military school. It is already their tradition, be it legal or illegal. The Japanese Occupation During the Japanese Occupation, their goal was to spread of the new Asian order, principle of new order, Courses of study, prescribed, uniform, and centralized. The propaganda tool, repressively anti-American and anti-British military back existence of an educational system. To the content of education, instill a value to stop depending on U.S. and Great Britain. Vocational education, technical and agricultural Love for labor or work. Adopt the Nipongo language as a medium of instruction. Tagalog, Philippine history and character education. Method of teaching. Road memorization. Use of threat and punishment. Legal basis. Military order number two in 1942. Establishment of the Commission of Education, Health and Public Welfare. Established of the Ministry of Education, October 14, 1943. Department of Public Instruction, February 27, 1945. Republic, 1945 to 1972. Promote democratic ideals and way of life. Apply equal education opportunity for all. Civil service eligibility of teachers. Republic Act 1265, Daily Flag Ceremony and Singing of the National Anthem. Executive Order No. 94, Department of Instruction to Department of Education, Bureau of Public and Private School. Batas Pambansa, Bilang 232, 
voluntary accreditation for school, colleges, or university, the obligation and qualification of teachers and administrator, government financial assistance to private schools, curriculum, Tagalog, Philippine history, and character education were the focus. Love for work and dignity for labor was emphasized. There was the spread of elementary and vocational education. Nipongo was used, and the Japanese tried to stop the Filipino people from using the English language. Six basic principles of the Japanese education. Realization of a new order and promote friendly relations between Japan and the Philippines to the farthest extent. Foster a new Filipino culture base. Endeavor to elevate morals of the people, giving up over emphasis to materialism. The fusion of the Japanese language in the Philippines. Promotion of vocational education to inspire people with a spirit to love neighbor. Education system during Japanese period with regards to the four pillars of education. Learning to know. Mastering learning tools rather than the acquisition of structured knowledge. Learning to do. Equipping people for the types of work needed now and in the future, including innovation and adaptation of learning to future works environments. Learning to live together and with the other. Peacefully resolving conflict. Discovering other people and other cultures. Fostering community capability, individual and community and capacity, economic resilience, and social inclusion. Learning to be, education contributing to the personal development, mind and body, intelligence, sensitivity, aesthetic, appreciation, and spirituality. The summary, learning and adaptation of Nipongo, importance of basic education through elementary education. The curriculum gives promotes vocational skills. Education emphasizes love of work. Orient Filipino that the Philippines is a member of the Greater East Asia co prosperity sphere. Education aims to foster a new Filipino culture based on self consciousness of the peoples as Orientals. Education elevates the morality of the people. To foretell the destiny of the nation, it is necessary to open the book that tells of her past. Jose Rizal quote inscribed in Fort Santiago. Thank you for listening.